Welcome back to Uniform Circular Motion. We're going to now be talking about planets orbiting around each other, moons orbiting around other planets, and more orbiting around the sun, big things like that. So, talking about universal gravitation. I hope you guys are excited. It's pretty a fun chapter. Let me pause this if you want to write this down, but we're going to go straight into it. Okay, first question. At which point will the gravitational field be the strongest, and at which point will it be the weakest? So we should just know right away. The closer the object is to the massive object, the more the gravitational field is. So A is the strongest, and the further away the uh, object is to the uh, big object, the weaker it is. So A is going to be the strongest, and B is going to be the weakest. All right, let's look at this. It says, determine the force, uh, gravitational force of attraction between the Earth, which has a mass of 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. That is the actual weight of the Earth or the mass of the Earth. And a 70 kilogram physics student. If the student uh, is standing at sea level, a distance 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we should know that the force of gravity that the student experiences and the force of gravity that the Earth experiences are exactly the same, just in opposite directions, okay? And we know how far they are from each other is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Even though they experience the same force of gravity, the Earth doesn't really move because it has so much more math than the physics student. So let's figure this out. I'm going to change my pointer real quick, but we're going to figure this out. We should know force of gravity is equal to capital G, M1, M2, r squared so let's write that all out force of gravity is equal to g which we know is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times m1 we're going to call m1 the physics student and m2 the mass of the earth 5.98 times 10 to the 24th and then this is all over how far they are from each other so 6.38 times 10 to the 6 squared so Make sure when you're doing this, you're plugging into your calculator correctly, because this is the part where most students have uh, messed up by plugging into their uh, calculator in the, in the wrong way. So take your time, simplify things as much as you can if you have to. If you can't do it all in one shot, don't do it. But I'm just going to be doing it all in one shot, uh, because I guess I'm more used to it. But if you can't do it in one shot, just do it one step at a time. And you should get something like 685.94 newtons. So that's the force of gravity that the physics student feels and also the force of gravity that Earth feels from the physics student. One thing we should know is this number could have been the same. We know force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity. So mass of the physics student is 70 and gravity of Earth is 9.8. And then we should get a very similar number, 70 times 9.8. And I know some of you might be getting pretty mad at me because we get the pretty much the same number, 686. But just know this equation that we used here, this equation can be used for everything and anything, okay? This force of gravity equation, mg, this is just when we were on Earth or something like that, okay? But this one we can use for anything. That's why it's called the universal gravitation. All right, let's continue. All right, a physics student is flying on an airplane 11,887 meters above the ground. Okay, so we can see, oh, it's a little bit hard to see, but he's above the ground 11,887 meters. Okay, determine the force of gravitational attraction between the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to 24 kilograms, and the 70 kilogram physics student if the distance of the Earth's radius is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay. Actually, maybe I'm going to use a different uh, pointer for this one. So what we know, we should know a few things. We should know the radius of the Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. We should know the mass of the Earth, mass of the physics students. Let's figure this out. Force of gravity is going to be equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. So we're trying to figure out what that force of gravity is, determine the force of gravity. So we know G is the same, gravitational constant. This is always going to be this number. M1, we're going to call this the physics student. And we could say that's the mass of the Earth, but it doesn't matter. M2, we're going to call that the mass of the Earth. So that's going to be 5.98 times 10 to the 24. And over R squared. We should know R is the whole length, how far they are from each other. So what this is going to be is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 
plus, because he's above Earth a little bit, 11,887. That squared. So we should see what this is equal to. So when this person's on this plane, we should feel, we should know that he's going to experience acceleration of gravity less than when he's on the Earth because he's further away. Not going to be that much less, but it is going to be less. So let's try to plug into our calculators correctly and see if we can figure this out. Times 70 times 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24. And then, uh, and break it up if you need to, okay. Divide by 6.38 times 10 to the power of 6 plus 11,887, all of that squared, and you do get a small number, 683.4 uh, newtons, okay? And we saw last time when he was on Earth, it was 685.9, so it's a little bit less, 683.4. So if you're on an airplane, you could jump a little higher because gravity isn't that much. Oh, that's what part B asked for. Find the acceleration of gravity that the student experiences. So the student experiences a force of gravity and the mass times the acceleration of gravity. So, so the force of gravity that the student experiences is 683.4. The Earth also experiences that. But the mass of the student is 70. And let's see what the acceleration of gravity is. So 683.4 divided by 70. And we should get around 9.7 six meters per second squared okay so it's a little bit less we could find that the acceleration that their earth experiences from this person but it's going to be extremely small and the mass of mars given that its radius is 3.39 times 10 to the six meters and that the acceleration of gravity on its surface is 3.373 meters per second squared okay so what we have here the radius 3.39 times 10 to the six meters and we also know any object experiencing acceleration of gravity of 3.73 meters per second squared. So just like uh, acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.8, on Mars is 3.73, so it's a lot less. So let's see if we can figure this out. We know force of gravity is equal to g m1 m2 r squared. But we should also know that the force of gravity is equal to the mass of some object times the acceleration of gravity which is going to be equal to g, mass of some object, mass of Mars, divided by r squared. So what we should know is, since any object is going to experience an acceleration of 3.73 meters per second squared, we could, one of these m's can cancel out like this. m1 can cancel out like that. Because this could be any object. It could be a 5 kilogram object. It could be a 20 kilogram object. It could be any kind of object, but it's going to experience the acceleration of gravity 3.373 meters per second squared. So now let's start to write this out. 3.73, that's the acceleration of gravity here, is going to be equal to the g, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of Mars, which we're looking for, divided by the radius, because that's how far an object, I don't know, we'll call this mass one, that's how far the object's going to be from the center uh, from the Mars. So how far they are from each other. So this is going to be 3.39, times 10 to the 6 squared. And now we can feel, find what the mass of Mars is. 3.73 times 3.39 times 10 to the power of 6 uh, squared divided by 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11. And we get the mass of Mars as 6.43 times 10 to the power 23 kilograms. So that's how the mass of Mars, okay? You could Google it and you'll get the same answer. Okay, moving on. Two objects attract each other gravitationally. If the distance between the centers is cut in half, the gravitational force is cut to one-fourth, cut in half, doubles, quadruples. So let's try to see if we can figure this out. Force of gravity is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Actually, let me write this a little bit better. The two objects track them. Mm -hmm. The gravitation. Okay. F g is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. 
Oh, if the distance between their centers is cut in half, the, uh, the gravitational force is, so the distance between them is cut in half, so they, they get closer by one half. So that means this is going to change by a factor of four. So this side will also change by a factor of four since this is squared. So it will quadruple getting stronger. Okay. Moving on. All right, last problem we're going to do for this video. Assume that a satellite with a mass of 500 kilograms orbits Earth 225,000 meters above its surface. Given that the mass of Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and the radius of Earth is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, how far is the satellite from the Earth center? All right, let's figure this out. Okay, first of all, we're going to say that's Earth. We're going to say this is the satellite orbiting Earth. I know it's not the best. We also know that this is going to be 225,000 meters away, and the radius of the Earth is given right here. So part A, we're just looking for how far it is all the way from the middle of the Earth to right there. So we're trying to figure that out. I'm going to call that capital R. So capital R is going to be equal to the radius of Earth, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters, plus 225,000. Let's see what that's equal to. 6.38 times 10 to the power of 6 plus 225,000, which gives us 6,605,000 meters. Okay, so that's A. All right, part B. What is the force of gravity that acts on the satellite? So we should know force of gravity is equal to g m1, or I'm going to call this mass of the satellite, mass of the Earth, divided by r squared, how far they are from each other. So let's figure this all out. Uh, g, we know, is going to be equal to 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Mass of the satellite is given 500 kilograms. Mass of the Earth is given 5.97 times 10 to the 24 all divided by how far they are from each other, which is going to be capital R, which is going to be equal to 6,605,000 squared. So let's figure this all out. 6.67 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 500 times 5.97 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by 6605,000 squared. And we get uh, 4,563.8 newtons. Okay. Part C, what is the force of gravity that acts on the Earth? So what we should know is the force of gravity from the Earth and the force of gravity from the satellite are exactly the same, but in opposite directions. So this is also going to be 4,563.8 newtons. Okay. Part D, what is the acceleration of gravity that the satellite experiences from the Earth? Okay, so what we should know is force of gravity is equal to the mass times acceleration of gravity. So we know the force of gravity of the satellite is 4,563.8. The mass of the satellite is 500, and now we can find acceleration of gravity. Okay, 4,563.8 divided by 500 is equal to 9.13 meters per second squared. Okay, whoops, 9.13 meters per second squared. And that should make sense because it's further from the Earth, so it's going to be less than 9.8. Part E now says, what is the acceleration of gravity that the Earth experiences from the satellite? So it's going to, the Earth's going to experience a lot less gravity, even though we know force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration of gravity. Mass is so much more. So the force of gravity, same thing. Earth experiences the same force, 4,563.8, but the mass of Earth is so much more, 6.38 times 10 to the 6, acceleration of gravity. So let's figure out what the acceleration of gravity is going to be. 4,563.8 divided by 6.38 times 10 to the power of 6, and we get, oh, wow, 0. 0.00072 meters per second squared. Okay, it's a lot less. All right. 
Uh, part F says, what is the speed of the satellite's orbit? All right, let me erase all of this. So what is the speed of the satellite's orbit? So we should know that, okay, so this is where it might get a little bit confusing, but hopefully it should still make sense. So we should know that the force of gravity, gravity is what allows this satellite to move in a circle or orbit in a circle. So force of gravity is equal to the force centripetal. Okay, so we should know that 4,563, wow, I should write that a little bit better. 4,563.8 uh, is equal to mv squared over r. So the mass of the satellite, 500, velocity squared, which we're looking for, and r, which we know is 6,605,000. This is going to give us what the velocity is, okay? 4,563.8 times 6,605,000 divided by 500 square root of that. And we should get around 7,764.5 meters per second. So satellites go very, very, very quickly around the Earth. Lastly, what is the period of the orbit? So we should know velocity is equal to 2 pi r divided by t. So 7,764.5 is equal to 2 pi r, 6,605,000, divided by t, which we're looking for. So let's try to figure that out. First, I'm going to do 2 pi times 6,605,000, divided by 7,764.5, and we get a period of 5,344.9 seconds. And then for hours, we're going to have divide by 60, divide by 60, and we get 1.4 hours or 8 hours. Okay? All right. I hope this uh, summed things up for you guys and it all made sense. Watch it again if it didn't. I know it was a long problem, but I hope it all made sense. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be doing more next time.